Hey guys, how's it going? Good morning. Um, I just want to go over today how you tell linear versus nonlinear functions from a table of values. So we went over how to kind of tell this from a graph. Um, we did that yesterday, and we're going to get a little more advanced into not just comparing linear versus nonlinear, but linear versus quadratic versus exponential. But today, I really want to drive from the point of what makes it look like a linear model. Okay, so I'm just going to graph a line. Okay, and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, graph myself out a line here. Red. Okay, so I'm going to start from three. Okay, and to graph a line, I always have the same slope. So I'm going to go up one, two, one, two, three. Up one, two, one, two, three. Up one, two, one, two, three. Okay. So let's make a little table of those values. There's there's a couple different ways you can write this. Um, you can write it horizontally. You can write it vertically. I can write it both ways just so you guys see. So it's x, and then we can say f of x, which is just y. You guys should know that by now, but no big deal. If you want to still write y for today, that's really okay. All right, so let's pick a couple of these points. I've got a uh, 0, 3. That's this point, right? Then I've got a uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 5. And this point, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six, seven. Now, taking a look at this, before we can get to that last point, you guys should be able to recognize that these numbers both went up by the same amount. I went up by two, and then I went up by two, and if I went up by two again, here. I went up by three, I went up by three again, here. So uh, my kind of rule on this side was to get from each point to the next, I went up by three, right? And if I kept going, like three more would be 12, right? And if I went uh, two more on this side, right, this rule over here was plus two. Oops. Um, let me smart board. Every single time, if there's a plus two, and again, if I want a plus two more, I would be at 11, right? So I can just kind of keep this going. And in fact, I can keep going down this way, right? If I went my next point down here, if I subtracted three, it would be negative three. If I subtracted two, one, which again, negative one, two, three, one would actually line up quickly, right? So linear were nice because they are predictable and they always had the slope, right? Remember, this is our way of finding slope, right? Our slope is always, hey, how much did y change by divided by how much did x change by, okay? So y in this case was changing by 3, and x was changing, um, so y was changing by 2, sorry. Right, my y values were changing by 2, my x values were changing by 3. And of course, it goes back to right, like, yeah, 2 over 3, right? So that was good. Now, nonlinear things, okay, so that was linear. Uh, Nonlinear things don't behave that way. So let's go ahead and let's graph um, just a couple points of a parabola. So say I had a, you know, our, or even our parent function, right? We got a point here, here, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Here, this is not true. And I do my best to draw. I'm sorry, drawing with this writing bad thing I got is very, very hard. Okay. All right. Oh my God. Way off. Okay. So we're going to pretend that that's a parabola <laughs> that goes through there. Sorry. I'm still getting the hang of this. Um, but let's, again, let's go through the points. I've got uh, uh, X, and we'll call it Y this time. No harm there. Okay. Uh, so let's go. Uh, I've got negative 2, 4. I've got negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And let's go, we'll go 3, 9. Okay. So these were still all going up by 1, right? Okay, but the difference here is this is changing. This is down three. This is down one. This is up one. This is up three. And this is up five. Now there's a pattern here, and we'll talk about that over the next few days. But the one thing we want to know is that our slope is changing. Our slope, our line, and again, this kind of makes sense. This is going down. It's going down. It's getting less steep. It's stopping for a second. Then it's going up and up and up and up. And if we kind of Look at that. Well, I'm pause this and bring it up on this. And if we got to look at that, it's it's going to get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper the further it goes. So our slope is not constant. So 
the first thing we really want to be able to do to distinguish linear and nonlinear from a table is just see if the slope is constant, okay? So it's a pretty straightforward process. All you need to do is see, hey, is the change in y constant? Is it always the same change here as the same change here? Now, I know you see decimals there. Don't freak out, OK? OK? Um, pretty much what you need to do is you're just going to see what's the difference here. So subtract these numbers and say, OK? So we're actually, I'll come back to 7. We're going to go to 8 first just to see what this looks like, OK? So let's take a look. What are what are these numbers changed by? They're always the same, right? These are good. This is what? This is up by one, up by one, up by one, up by one, right? This. Now what do we do? We went down five. Now we went, oh, we went down three. Right there, you can stop. This is non linear. Okay. Good. Again, as long as these are all going up by the same number, you can just compare these numbers, okay? Um, over here, again, what are these going up by? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. These are all going up by plus 1, right? This, what do we do? I went uh, 3 here, and I went 3 here, and I went 3 here, and I went 3 here. So this is linear, okay? All right. Now, when you're looking at the difference between linear and nonlinear, one of the easiest things you can do is kind of take a look at take a look at the easier numbers first. Okay, so what are these changed by? This changed by one, and this changed by one. This changed by two, and this changed by six. You can stop right there. Well, it's not linear, right? You don't even care about these decimal numbers. As soon as you see that these numbers in comparison are different, then you can stop. Okay. Um, so this is also going to be non-linear. So again, my suggestion to you guys, look at the easier numbers first, okay? Now, if these were the same slope, then yes, you have to explore these to make sure that all of them are the same. But frankly, once you see this, you can kind of stop. Okay. Uh, another one is that people freak out because like they turn the table sideways, okay? What are your y's changing by? What are your x's changing by? Okay, these, these are the same table, look. X's and Y's going down, and now these are just X's and Y's going across, but people for some reason lose their minds, okay, because when they put them sideways, okay? So again, what are these changing by? Again, these are all changing by plus one here, right? So once we see these are all changing by plus one, all we have to do is compare the numbers here. So what do we got here? Uh, from negative seven, negative five, that's plus two. From negative five, negative three, that's plus two, plus two, plus two. This would be linear. Okay, always going up at the same rate. Over here, again, down, uh, I'm sorry, uh, up one, up one, up one, up one. And here, what did this change by? Well, 2 to 0. 0.5, 2 to 0. 0.5, well, that's negative 1.5. Now, say you didn't have that, uh, you could just break out your calculator, right? Like, you guys have calculators, I would hope. I mean, if you're, if you're watching this video, you have a calculator not too far by, okay? So, again, what's the difference between 0. 0.5 and 2? Point five minus two. Okay, you can go ahead and you say it's down by one point five. So as this just went down by one point five, from zero to point five, how much should it change? Again, take the second number, zero minus point five, and you'll get the first number. So negative point five. So you can stop right there. You don't have to go any further. Okay. So again, these change by plus one each time, and this change by different numbers. This is non linear okay so again I'll do one more of these and then we get again some more advanced things okay so again these are all changing by one so this is plus one plus one plus one plus one this is what down six right? this is down two and then you can stop there but so this is gonna be non-linear okay Um, uh, no, we're good with that. Okay, so something like this. Now here's where it's going to get a little bit trickier because these numbers are now no longer changing by the same amount. From 2 to 14, what did it change by? This is a change of plus 12. And from 
14 to 20, that is a change of plus 6. That does not mean that it's not linear. What that means from our graph is that they didn't give us all the points. So if that might say, hey, they're giving you, I don't know, let's pick a couple points. Let's say, uh, uh, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And let's go uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the question is, are these points linear? Yeah, they just, they skip some points on the way, right? If we connect these dots, they are still linear. They just skip some points over here in the middle. And that's okay, okay? So this, these are going to be some of the more advanced problems you guys take a look at. Um, and over here on the other side, let's take a look. What did this change by? Well, this went down by six. And then was, this went down by 3. So if you take a look, if I take my change in y over my change in x, right? well, my y for the first one went from negative 6 over 12. That's a slope of negative 1 half. And at my second point, it went down 3 over 6, which is also negative 1 half. So when they go up by different amounts, you have to take the y values divided by the x values and compare the numbers, right? So again, something like this. Well, from negative 10 to negative 2, that's a change of 8. And from 2 to 10, that's a change of 12. From negative 8 to negative 1, that's a change of 7. From one, from negative one to nine and a half, that is a change of ten and a half. Well, again, that's a change in y over change in x. Well, it's seven over eight, and then we also have ten point five over twelve. So you can break out your calculator. Seven over eight, twenty seven five. And the other one was 10.5 over 12. Same number, right? So both of these give you 0.875. So when you get some numbers where they're skipped, um, we can tell this is actually linear, right? They, they're both going up by the same amount. All right, again, same problem. It is, okay? So again, that's about as complicated as they can get. Um, so like I said, your problems are going to start out, they're going to be all going up by the same amount, uh, and then they're going to start skipping around. Um, so if you guys are okay with this for today, I'm okay with that. But uh, if you guys can get through stuff like this, I'd, I'd be really impressed, okay? So like I said, just make sure you're dividing your change in Y divided by your change in X, okay?